Thanks for watching Adracana, the Advanced Racing Analysis. And this is a review of the LMP2s at the Roar before the 24. So before I go on, please subscribe and like this video if you think it's been informational. I was really looking forward to the rally, well, now Multimatic P2 cars showing. I really was hoping it would have a good showing to show the potential that the uh, Masters have been showing in the DPI class, but it wasn't to be. Apparently, there was a, a bodywork issue that sent the team packing. They didn't have the bodywork and they said that Multimatic kept all the bodyworks for the factory Mazda DPIs. Even if this car has any potential, it shows that the funding is not there to back it because the team would have had its own bodywork if they're planning to go for a 20, 24 hour race, you know, because this is what happens in 24 hours, especially in practice, if they were planning to go all out, they would have they would have had the body work to go with the car unless Multimatic itself puts up um, you know the support behind this effort to make it go forward no one who has any serious aspirations in LMP2 will touch this car because there's just too many good options out there I mean the Oricas there's so many Oricas and even the Delegia and the, and the Delara so those are pretty good options so why would you want to go into an unknown project so no one who has any serious aspirations speed to will touch this car so right now there's only two drivers in this effort so Cody Ware and uh, also Jonathan Hogar so those are two, only two drivers who they need another driver I think Multimatic should sponsor this program I mean Multimatic should get behind this effort just to show what the chassis can do especially to prove to themselves that you know that the updates were really good I think that's what that's what needs to happen out of all the chassis builders that were trying to get selected by the ACO, um, I think Dome was one. Uh, there was Dome, BR Engineering, and also my personal favorite, Zytec. So out of all of them, now looking back, you know, Rally wasn't such a good choice because all of them had pretty good cars that were competitive at the time. But Rally seemed like a good choice because American teams were used to Rally from the DP days, so they figured. You know they'll have easier time working with Rally because they were American based. The only thing is that technology in Le Mans prototype cars has evolved and Rally has not been part of the process for at least 10 years, a good decade. So Rally hasn't built a chassis in over 10 years. So and things had evolved from then on. Looking back, it seemed like a bad idea by the time it was the the decision was understandable and Rally could have been a good challenge because they built the DPs and they had uh, they are very well established so um, and they have resources so at the time it was a good decision but right now you know looking back it seemed like maybe one of the other ones should be chosen maybe Zytec should have been part of the process so Z Zytec was really good he's a really good constructor they were actually during the time of the alien LMP2 cars when you had the uh, the factory P2 cars Zytec was the only constructor that was somewhat able to challenge them so that was the only Team, uh, car chassis that was somewhere able to challenge him so I believe Zatek could have made a pretty good car. The top three at the world qualifying are pretty much the contenders for the race so each of those top three cars has its own strengths and I'm going to go through all of them one by one. Starting with the number 52 pro car of PR1 Matthijsson Motorsports. I believe they have the best bronze driver in Ben Keating and he's the best bronze driver I think anywhere he, he should be a silver but you know but he's a bronze driver sometimes when he's a car you actually will mistake him for a gold driver because he has a very very good pace but the only thing I feel might do well the team is that he he's also running in the GTD class so and now that because the bronze driver has a has to have a minimum drive time and so that could derail the team if he's confused or he could make possibly make a mistake because they the separate cars and the cars behave differently on um, yeah on track completely so um, that's the only thing maybe that could derail them uh, from his end uh, but he's well flanked he got Simon Trummer, Gabriel Aubrey and Nick Bull so Nick Bull is a silver driver and uh, but he's pretty good too so the number 81 car of uh, Dragon Speed. So Dragon Speed probably maybe might be the the most experienced as far as uh, running 24 hour races out of all the out of all the teams here because they go all over and they've been in many long distance races compared to all the other teams. Last year they actually won it, but that was the number 18 car, and this year they still have another 18 car, but um, it has different lineup. 
So in the number 81 car, Ben Henley and uh, Colin Brown are supposed to be gold and Harrison Newey is supposed to be a silver and Henry Head Henrik Hedman is supposed to be a bronze. But in reality, according to their pace, in my opinion, Harrison Newey is actually a gold driver. In Super Formula, he had the podium. So for anyone to finish on the podium in Super Formula, you have to have a very good pace. So Starworks Motorsports is back in the fold and in my opinion they have drivers true to their FIA rating. John Ferrano is a bronze, David Meyer Hansen is a silver, Ryan Dial is a gold and Nicolas Lapierre is a platinum driver. Nicolas Lapierre is probably the best Orica P2 driver in the past few years. He has won Le Mans four times in Orca P2 cars in the 05, two in the 05 and two in the 07 Orca. And he has also won two championships in Orca cars. So this is the best Orca driver you can find. This is like the guy to drive in Orca. So they need to make sure he drives the maximum drive time, which I believe is 10 hours. So that's the maximum drive time. So they, need, they really need to make sure he gets his the maximum amount of time. The only thing is that because Ryan Dial is the, is the team's hot shoe, regular hot shoe, full season driver. So sometimes when you have a guest driver taking a starting role, that kind of creates intra-team friction, unseen friction in, uh, yeah, in team. So hopefully that doesn't come to pass, but I believe LaPierre is the best P2 driver, uh, I mean Orica P2 driver. Aero Motorsport is essentially the second Dragon Speed car, so they have the number 18. Last year Dragon Speed had two cars, the number 81 and number 18, and the, the number 18 one. This time around, I don't think the number 18 will win it. So the number 18 this year is not a contender. Last year, the Lana was uh, pretty stout, so, but this year is quite different. But still, considering that Dragon Speed has a very good strategy, the know-how, the experience, they could still propel them to the front if other cars have issues or even the number 81 car has also has an issue. So for the number 18 car, they have three silver drivers and Nick Manassian. Somehow he, he is still rated platinum. Nick Manassian, he's been retired for the past two years. So he's been prime, you know, I don't know if he has kept up, kept in shape or he's been practicing and I don't know if he can still drive as fast as he used to, I'm not sure. But either way, he should still be able to be faster than the other co-drivers, but I think he should at least drop down to a gold, but the FIA website says that he's still a platinum. But in his day, he was very fast. He won, He was the one, the Peugeot LMP1 driver, so this is a very fast driver, and hopefully he still has some of that. Hopefully he's kept in shape and he's still very, very sharp. 38 Performance Tech car. That one has all gentleman drivers. None of those drivers are professional, so they have all bronze and silver rated drivers. Last year, they actually finished second, so I can see why they chose to have the same lineup because they finished second, but I believe because other, some, some of the other teams had trouble, but that's a good thing with the all civil lineups because they go slower, they go at a steadier place, they, they go at a deliberate pace, and they avoid all mistakes, and they capitalize on others' mistakes, and or they're having trouble and in trouble because they are gentleman drivers they can actually take it easier on the car so the car could last longer body work will last longer everything will last longer and then others have a mistake they capitalize on it so last year they were second so they figure let's go for one go around so that's very respectable from them and i hope they do they do well but in sheer pace they will not be able to match any of the other cars so those uh, the second PR1 car, the number 51, that one, we don't have any drivers. Gabriel Aubrey is dominating that car, but that was just for the car to enter to be there because any car that wants to participate in Daytona has to be at the roar. So they had him there just so the car would be um, would be entered into the race. Probably that car might be withdrawn if they don't get any drivers. In truth, however, LMP2 is harder to follow for the even for the Keen fan. So because LMP2, you have to dig deep into the drivers to learn about them and a lot of times they don't have readily available information compared to some of the drivers in uh, DPI, some drivers in uh, GTLM because those guys are a lot more popular so it's easier to follow them. So the P2 drivers are hard to follow unless the team has a professional, you know, a hot shoe in their mix but a lot of the time they're hard to follow. They're actually even harder to follow than the 
GTD drivers sometimes. The JGC was a product challenge car and then they went to P2 and then they moved up to DPI. So we want those teams there and eventually hopefully they do graduate. So we have to give them that support to make sure eventually they move up to be part of the bigger show and that we can enjoy them more. So thank you for watching and hopefully you make some effort to follow the P2 car. So hopefully this has helped. I will have the, uh, a link to the FIA driver rating database in the description and please like and subscribe.